G'day folks, and welcome to an on-chain update for the 22nd of April. So what we're going to be looking at today is this correction we've been in for just about a month. So for the back half of May and most of April, we've been chopping around up here between about 73k and uh, where we are about 60k. They're kind of the lows and the upper bounds. Um, and really, when we have corrections in a bull market, they, they're healthy, they're required, and they're necessary. But the challenge is, how do we pick the top from a top because as Bitcoin chops around and goes through these processes, the the, the amount of noise that comes up and narrative about, well, wait, hang on, it's over, uh, tends to actually build up over time. So I want to explore a framework that I use um, and some of the really popular metrics that I like to use to really just assess where are we in the grand scheme of things, looking at it from the lens of a correction. So it is really easy to get swept up in the world of narrative in the world of Bitcoin. There's always some guy calling for 12K. There's always some guy calling for 1K. And there's always a whole bunch of people calling for a million. So there's all these narratives floating around. And it's quite difficult to actually distill the signal from the noise. Now, there's a couple of metrics that I've used for a long time. And they're very, very simple. You've probably actually heard of them before. The Mayer multiple, which is just a simple ratio of the 200-day moving average in price and the MVRV ratio. Both are very, very popular metrics. But what I want to do today is just give you a really simple framework and a set of tools to add just an extra level of rigor to it. So rather than just looking at MVRV and saying, oh, it's 2.1, well, what does 2.1 actually mean? And what I want to do is show you how you can assign some very simple probabilities that can really help us understand what is actually a high value, what is actually a low value, and how can we consider those moving forward. So if you are watching this on YouTube, please do give us a like, a share, and a subscribe. It does help this channel get to more people. Um, and if you're really enjoying this analysis, make sure you head over to our Substack at newsletter.checkonchain.com. We've got heaps of great research going on over there. We're doing multiple pieces a week for our paid members. Um, and we actually, as of this morning in our first week, got over 100 paying subscribers. So if you are one of our paying subscribers and you're watching this, thank you very much. You're an absolute legend. Um, you really have made our year and uh, we're looking forward to what comes next. So anyway, with Without further ado, let's get stuck right into the analysis. Okay, so where I want to start is just very, very high level. This is actually a chart from the newsletter you'll find on our Substack. Um, we're going to start by looking at the Mayer multiple, and that's just the price divided by the 200-day moving average. We'll touch on why I'm actually using this metric in just a second. But really, the key takeaway from this particular chart is we've got four different market environments, exhaustion, enthusiasm, euphoria, and excess. And the reason why I'm going to use this is we'll use it on the Mayer Multiple and the MVRV, both really, really useful frameworks. And you probably just see as I tell you these stories, see whether this actually clicks, right? And this is not just from looking at the data. This is also my experience having lived through some of these Bitcoin cycles. These are definitely some of the emotions that we go through, right? Let me just bring myself back in the screen because we've got the, uh, the formula out the way. So when we're talking about exhaustion, we start all bam, all bull markets at the bottom of a bear right? The most, the period of maximum opportunity down here at the, you know, 2018 bottom, the FTX lows, it feels horrible. It's been going down for 18 months. Everything looks pretty dire at that point in time. And we feel exhausted, right? That's really the, probably the dominant emotion, uh, aside from probably feeling a little bit blue. Now, enthusiasm is when we get the first green candle, right? Things start to come back to life. They haven't fully reached their apex yet, but we're no longer in that exhaustion phase. Now, if you can recall 2023, there was a lot of periods through here where it felt like PTSD was coming back. We were going to sell off. We were going to break down. Like There was a lot of PTSD from the previous bear, even though the market really just was grinding sideways to up. So there was a lot of this uncertain recovery and really enthusiasm. We go from a kind of uncertainty through to enthusiasm as we get towards the late stage of it. Um, that's when people are actually enthusiastic. They believe the bull is back. It's no longer bearish. Now, as you break previous all-time highs, this is the phase that I like to call euphoria. And we really are, I mean, quite literally straddling that zone between our top range at 73Ks in the euphoria phase. And as we trade lower down to 60K, we're actually back into the, you know, the enthusiasm, the 2023 recovery phase. So we're really straddling that line. You may have felt this. At 73K, the ETFs were going to change everything. Here at 60K, people are like, wait, the top might be in. So you can actually see like just in the narrative that, you know, the market kind of shifts between these two. We really are straddling those two levels. 
Now, euphoria phase, the last thing I want to touch on there is note it gets a lot more volatile because the Mayer multiple measures our price deviation from the 200 day, right? 200 days fairly stable and slow. Note how the volatility, the big swings that we get as we move into that realm get much, much larger, right? So that is something we can certainly be expecting moving forward. As the market pushes higher into this euphoria phase, things get a lot choppier. In fact, you can see here, we got to the top end of it and then broke all the way back down. 2021, we tested these levels multiple times. So note that it can get a lot more volatile. And in the excess phase, I mean, that really only happens on very, very brief periods, extreme deviations from the 200-day moving average. This is when Bitcoin has no top. It's going to a million dollars tomorrow, and uh, it's a new paradigm. You've probably seen this movie before. Uh, it pretty much ends exactly, uh, well, eventually we get down back into this green box, right? Just uh, enough said. So we're going to use this framework, all right? And the current Mayer multiple is 1.3. Let's actually just move on to the actual Mayer multiple itself and actually have a look at some of these different mechanics. And what I really wanna do is see these dashed lines, which I use to break up those market cycles. I'm gonna quickly show you, well actually show you how I got to those levels. These aren't just arbitrarily eyeballed in. They're actually based on a level of probability and trying to assess what is a likely and an unlikely value of the Mayer multiple. Now, just a very, very quick touch on why I actually chose the Mayer multiple and why it's called the Mayer multiple, actually. So Trace Mayer was actually the first one who started talking about this metric and the framework that we're about to go through. It's simply price divided by the 200-day. Now, why is this a useful tool? Well, the first thing is that traders from all kinds, whether commodities, bonds, stocks, Bitcoin, they all look at the 200-day. Many of them use it as a bull bear transition point. So it's a widely used metric. And because it's so widely used, that increases the probability that more people are going to observe. It becomes a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And in fact, the 200-day was providing support and resistance before we even had price charts on TradingView. And the reason for that is that, can you remember your cost base from about 200 days ago? When you're at the top of a bull, 200 days ago, Bitcoin felt cheap. When you're at the bottom of a bear, 200 day, days ago, Bitcoin felt expensive, right? So if you look at all of these different components, our memory as a, as a people, just our collective memory doesn't really go back much further than 200 day. So it really is that kind of anchoring. We don't really remember what was going on before that. So many people anchor their feeling for what Bitcoin, the last price that they're aware of or what they believe is cheap or expensive, it's most likely going to be somewhere in that 200 day range. So that's just a bit of a test. So just ask yourself, what, what do you reckon the average price is of 200 days ago um, and over the last 200 days? And you'll be surprised, you might actually find it's actually not too far from where the 200 day moving average is. Okay, so that's enough about the, uh, the story time. Let's get into where these levels come from. So what we've got here is a histogram. And for those who are familiar with statistics, this will immediately make sense to you. For those who haven't spent that much time with statistics, the goal that we're trying to find here, let me just quickly jump back to our Mayer multiple chart. At the peak when the ETFs, when we hit the all-time high, we we're about 1.85. Where we are right now is about 1.3. So keep those two numbers in mind, 1.85 at the top, 1.3 where we currently are. The goal of this section is to say, well, what does 1.85 actually mean? Is that a big number? Is it a high number? Is it low? Should I be concerned? Should I not? So let's start with 1.85. The histogram is basically showing us how many days, the x-axis is Mayer multiple, how many days has Bitcoin closed with a Mayer multiple of 1.35, 1.4, 1.45, different levels. Now, the orange chart is showing us the percent of all of these days, right, from zero to 100% of all trading days, how many Mayer multiples have been lower than that value. So the flip side is if the orange line is saying 87%, that means that 87% of all observations were lower and 13% were higher, all right? So now let's go to our numbers. By the way, this is our current value. 1.35 is where we are currently trading for the Mayer multiple. It's giving us a CDF value of 74%. So roughly two thirds of all observations have seen a Mayer multiple lower than where we currently are. Now that also means about a quarter, 26% of all observations are higher. So now if we ask ourselves, are we overheated? Well, think about this like a game of probability. Let's go all the way over this side. If we're looking at a CDF of 98%, that means that only 2% of trading days have been above that level. The probability that we're gonna stay above that level is not high. It's something on the order of about 2%. So that means that there's a 98% chance the market wants to go lower. May multiple may be a little bit too high. 
So if we're looking at a value where it's about, you know, two thirds, 26%, 24%, it's not really that overheated. And considering we are in a bull market and really consolidating after hitting a new all time high, having 25% of tra all Bitcoin trading days ever being above that level actually doesn't feel that overheated at all. It's really telling us, I mean, it kind of feels like if you just assume, like, let's, let's take a really, really simple number. If the Mayer multiple is a bull bear line, then 50%, right? Where's our 50% level? 1.1, 1 .1, so it's a 10% premium to the 200-day move, moving average. Let's just, for ballpark, say it's, it's around the number of one. That means that bear market is on the left-hand side, bull market is on the right-hand side. So we're kind of halfway through the bull, just using that number of 50% is there. And we're looking at 25% above. We're somewhere in the middle of the bull based on this metric. That would kind of be one read. Now, if we go to 1.85, where we were before at the peak when the ETFs were live, we have a CDF value of 89%. This means only 11% of all history has been above that. Now, that's not quite as cooled off as where we currently are, but it's also not the most extreme. So in a way, we're talking about 11% chance that the market was going to keep going, which aren't big, right? One in 10, something in that ballpark. So as a result, it doesn't really surprise us that we got a bit of a correction and a bit of consolidation at that point. In fact, it actually feels like it makes a lot of sense. So what I now want to do is jump across to the MVRV because what we can really start to pull out from MVRV, whilst the Mayer multiple is great and the 200-day moving average tells us part of the story, MVRV and the short-term holder MVRV really get into the nuts and bolts and help us understand whether this is a healthy correction or one that actually may need some more time to go through. So thanks folks for tuning in for part one of our weekly analysis. If you enjoyed the video and you want access to the full video and the rest of our analysis, do head over to our Substack and hit subscribe. As a paying member, you'll actually get access to a second piece of analysis each week, as well as the comment section where you can ask me questions and we'll answer them in a Q&A on a regular basis. So thank you so much for all of your support. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.